before we start, does anybody have any additions to the agenda that was put forth? Nope. And, um, in which case, uh, we'll start with the minutes from the last meeting of June 28th. And I thought they all looked. What I remember that happened. I move to approve those. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we also have the minutes from the special select board meeting of um, July 2nd. And that looked pretty um, real to me. I'd move to approve those. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And um, going right down the list in the departmental reports. Joan, you're here um, via Zoom. Do you want to um, speak up and let us know what's on your mind, what you've been working on? Sure. Uh, first thing is, um, I left a spreadsheet for you, copy uh, for all three of you, uh, that came from CNN. Right here, right here. Uh, for the Sorry. recent book, uh, culvert replacement. And one of the things that uh, she agreed to do when we had our sort of pre-kickoff meeting at the site a couple of weeks ago was acknowledging the fact that it was, uh, you know, uh, a year later and, and uh, the effects of COVID on the cost of building materials and other things that she needed. And we had just, you know, agreed that uh, we were not going to build a bypass road, that she would re take another look at the, the cost sheet that was uh, submitted with her original bid back in it was 2020. Yeah, 2020, and uh, uh, see where we stood in terms of the total cost of the project. Uh, this was something that we agreed to do when the project went out to bid. It was explained to all the contractors that, um, you know, if there are extenuating circumstances as a result of COVID, uh, we would agree to discuss what the cost might be if we were not here, if we weren't able to do the project last year. We so um, I'm going to bring mine up on the screen. Uh, to my look at yours. It's actually, I think she did a great job. Um, no, I can't open it. No, George, who is the she you're talking about? I'm sorry, I'm not to interrupt you. This is the contractor who's doing the nascent work. And what's her name? I've forgotten. You want to copy that, John? Michelle Gaborio. You want to see that? G A B O U R. Can I, can I tell you yeah, later what it is? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, what, what's send your company's name? name? I'm sorry, I can yeah. bring up uh, my screen now. <laughs> right? Sorry. Right. Yeah. I'm probably yeah. doing something. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Martha just needs the company name. G and N. Uh, G and N. G and N is the company, Martha. The letter G and the letter N. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. Uh, uh, you'll see the, the bottom line, if you go all, over, go all the way over to the right-hand column, the percent of change, and then down to the bottom under total, um, to be able to keep increases down to a, a total of 1%, which I think is great. Um, is Cricket talked about this. Cricket looked at it as well, and she was also impressed with Michelle's ability to um, keep the, uh, the increase down so low. A big part of that, keeping that down, was um, our decision to close the road instead of doing the bypass, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You're absolutely right. $12,700. We yeah. were a bit worried about what the uh, the culvert was going to cost because it's a big culvert, and you know those things can be very expensive. And that actually was the biggest, uh, one of the biggest increases. You look down about the middle of the page, uh, item number 601.0342, that's up to something or other, is the culvert. And it did go up 20% uh, in cost. Uh, but there were some cost saving. Well, the rest of the um, things that did go up were pretty minimal. I just lost my page again. Okay. Uh, um, so the first increase of $380 was for granular backfill, $115 for uh, fine graded crushed gravel, et cetera. So the rest mostly were pretty small. The next one down, the 4,365 was for pavement. And I think you've probably already experienced what's happening with cost of pavement. 
and paid in contractors generally. Um, so, uh, and then she did increase, some, uh, did she no, she didn't increase the traffic control uh, category, which was in there already, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, um, what the plan is for that. So uh, I just wanted you to see this and then um, to ask if you would uh, approve this so that I can get back to her and tell her um, where we can do a contract amendment to uh, incorporate this new cost estimate. Well, it's not an estimate, it's basically- That's what it is, yeah. So without, without the, uh, the bypass road in there, it actually is a 7% increase um, which is reduced by the amount of the bypass road to a 1% increase. Correct? Yeah. So, um, so I need a uh, uh, movement to uh, approve this new, um, new proposal, new cost structure, or is this just informational? No, uh, well, it would require a con uh, contract amendment. Yeah. So I, I felt it best that um, you, know, you can say whether you agree to it or not. From this far, I think for you know, we're pretty lucky. It's only three thousand dollars more than what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. I'll so, second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay. So we'll. Um, Put together uh, the amended contract? Yes, and I'll have you sign that, yeah. dude. Yep. Yeah. All right. Are we sticking on the uh, three week time thing? Are we putting so, anything in for I, if it goes to six weeks instead of three? Or I, I don't think we're going to adjust that at all, are we? I think we're going to leave it at the three week, yeah, yeah. The three week limit, and it's all really barring so, on whether or not the culvert is available. Correct. On the, on if the, the coverage is available, then we're we're staying with the three week closure. Right. Still and wouldn't be longer than three weeks, right? They aren't going to start until they get cover. Right. Exactly. Right. right. So, so they should right. be three, three weeks. In the three weeks, according to uh, uh, Michelle and Rick had agreed with it was was really the outside limit. They think the project can probably be done in two, um, but felt safe, safer to. Call it three, and if we finish sooner, then we look good. Yeah. Okay. And if for some reason it takes six, there's no penalty or anything. I'm sorry, Pat. I have a hard time understanding your. If for some reason it ends up taking six or seven weeks, there's there's there'll be no penalty written into the contract for going out and above the uh, road closure. Uh, I don't know. Um, we haven't talked about there being a penalty for well, that. Well, we, we just now are talking about yeah. the road closure part. Yeah. I, so. I think we keep it on a three week and, and uh, you know, we can put something in there if she goes over. It's a cost for her, not for the town. I right. We had that so, written into the Bethel Mountain project. So we should probably do right. something. That was a pretty. <coughs> that was an yeah, unusual. That was I think that was a. Well, yeah. uh, just because we had to yeah. end by a certain date in order to qualify for 100 percent. Yeah, but that was a whole We had a funding yeah. deadline for that one. Okay, and yeah. and Bethel will be coordinating with the road closure if we have to move it later yeah. because of the COVID. Yeah, We're, we've, we've been in the, touch with the them. date. It's going to close, so you Bethel fire and all. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we we don't don't know that for sure right yet, Terry, right, because right. of the covert. When, as soon as we find out, we're letting them know. We've been in touch well, I have with a little Bethel. more information on the right, timing right. of that. Bethel um, found um, the visit with Bethel fire. I've been in touch with Michelle, and she has um, all of the message boards and the signage lined up, uh, and an approved traffic plan, which I uh, I think we've seen. And I sent it last <coughs> week to Bethel and talk to uh, Therese as well. And that is for the week of, well, the culvert is expected to be uh, delivered the last week of July. And so far it's still on schedule for that. Um, and based on that, the work would start on Monday, August 2nd. 
and what the contractor will be doing is uh, putting up the message boards early in the week of July 19th, which is next week, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So people are seeing those signs well in advance. Uh, and I let Therese uh, um, know that. And in addition, and Teresa and I talked about coordinating on getting the word out in other ways. Um, and that we would use the same language uh, coming from Bethel as well as from Rochester. So basically she's asked Rochester to share whatever it is we write up and they would post the same thing. Um, so I, I wanted to check with you. My, my plan right now is to put one or probably two separate uh, notices in the Herald starting next week and then the following week. Uh, mm -hmm. Notifying everyone of the uh, for the closure and the timing and the reason, and we would post it on French port, French port, uh, front porch for <laughs> This Bethel will do as well. They'll put it on their website. Bethel has a Facebook page. They'll put it on there. Um, and I was wondering if you had any other suggestions. I think we need to notify fire and rescue on both sides of the mountain. Yeah, we yeah, just, yeah, just mentioned that. Yeah, and either someone on your side of the screen uh, can tell me you'll do it, or else tell me who I should be contacting. I'll contact you. Terry said he'd, he'd contact Bethel. Okay, yep. great, great. And is there any other uh, thing you can think of that we should be doing to get the word out? Any other venue? No, I think that will uh, the only other thing to be done before school starts. Yeah, yeah. Post it around town, but yeah. I think it's pretty yeah. well with the signage. I think it's pretty well. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be watching this media meeting, so they should know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, and they should all be reading the Herald too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> no, I think we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Okay. And so what I would like to do is just to make sure I capture it properly and adequately. Uh, if I, maybe Frank, uh, if I could send it to you and you could edit it or tell me if I've missed anything before I send it out. Sure, I can do that. Yep. Okay, great. And then last but not least, our favorite current project, uh, the retaining wall. Um, I sent you around an email la uh, last week or week before about it, and I'm still kind of struggling figuring out what to do. Um, we've been strongly advised by our contacts um, on the state end of our FEMA projects folks um, to ask for an extension on that project. We already have one extension approved through this December 31st, and she said, well, you get a free pass for uh, one year's extension, and if you go back for a second one, it has to go uh, further up the chain to the FEMA authorities to see if they will approve it. Um, so she suggested that I write a letter, which June, I'll have you sign, mm -hmm. uh, for an ex an ex the extension and giving the reasons for it, which uh, will not blame the FEMA engineers for estimating uh, no. <laughs> the scope and the cost. So this but is a one year extension? We're asking Request. for. Uh, we're requesting a, a second extension. We already got <laughs> one year, correct? Yes, and we'll yeah. ask for another one through December of uh, 22. And that she's saying that because that'll allow us to possibly retain the $15,800 that they've given us for the project. Then if we are successful in getting a, a USDA grant and I'm just in the beginning stages of figuring that out. Um, a will only give up to 35% of the cost of a project like this. So that could potentially bring us in another almost exactly the same amount, about 15750 So then <clears throat> if both of those funding were still in place, we would then still have to raise 14000 yeah, um, no, it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if anyone can tell me at this point uh, whether the ARPA money can be used for something like that. It's, um, we'll, we'll know. Hancock. It's, um, it can be used for a match, a federal match. 
It, um, there may be some way of tying it into the safety of stabilizing the, um, the septic line. In yeah. there. I was talking with um, a select board member in Brandon today, and they're, that's one of the options they're looking at for using their money is um, dealing with um, the septic water and sewer infrastructure. They're saying this possibly right. falls under that. So. There's a lot of money out there right now in the yeah. water and sewer department. It might be yeah. worth looking into some lot. Yeah. 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 Excuse me, am I correct? Lot of money, but I understand that um, the amount of money the towns are getting is based on uh, population. Right, right. So I don't know. Do you know what that's going to bring to Rochester? <clears throat> we were guessing just under three hundred thousand or so. Oh, really? Yeah. And then there is movement afoot on the state level to reallocate um, money that the counties are getting, which uh -huh. is. Um, um, they're not sure if they they have the wherewithal to spend that. Right. No, no, this would be on top of it. Okay. Yeah, really possibly. 50 but something this year, this yeah. year, fifty something next year, and then the yeah. more was I thought county money. Anyway, it's um. Let's ask for this um, extension on the FEMA money since uh, we already have that, and we'll um that gives us buys us some more time to to <laughs> evaluate if these other funds will be applicable or not. Now, if there are other uh, funds available outside of the ARPA funds for sewer projects, it seems like the that way stabilizing too. the sewer line would would, would, would could fall into yeah, that. Yeah. And then we wouldn't need to use the ARPA funds. Yeah. Anyway. Right. So, if we don't have yeah. to use them, it'd be good. Um, excuse me. If I'm correct that the retaining wall you're talking about is the one you talked about at the last meeting that's secured by the town office. Right. 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 Thank you. All right, um, so I'll look for that letter, and we'll send it off okay. to them. Thank you, Joan. That's it? Yes, thank you. Right. That's good. Um, just have to enter the library. Well, we have a trustees meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the Vermont room at the library, of course. Uh, the library community cookbook is nearly ready to be published and to be out and that'll be sold at the cafe and uh, Sandy's bookstore and probably the library and a few other places around uh, now. and just I guess as a matter of interest nine no I'm sorry 12 people were vaccinated at the uh, vaccine clinic on Friday nice. really wow that's great <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, it doesn't sound like very many, but I guess uh, all of these clinics are really sort of slow. They, uh, they said that the Waitsfield Farmer's Market one had three people vaccinated. Wow. They were doing it in a landfill someplace. Have they? they? Yeah, they <laughs> landfill, yeah. That was Is that right? That Great. Really Saturday late. morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What what vaccine were they giving out? The Johnson and Johnson one. Yeah. yeah. The one and then. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, on to the highway, Cooter. Thanks for coming in tonight. I've missed you. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot. Well, gonna finish hopefully. Our project in Sky Hollow tomorrow. All goes well. I can't hear you. Um, I'm sorry. He's, <laughs> he's uh, they're going to hopefully finish the project on Sky Hollow Road tomorrow. And other than that, life just keeps going on. Yeah. So he, um, he gave us the um, kind of a breakdown of downtime for the different vehicles. Um, over the last few years, and I, um, and it's like 2018, 19, in the course of two years, um, one truck you had 12 weeks out of service, and the other truck you had 14 weeks out of service, and the pickup was out for 11 weeks. Does that sound roughly by the two weeks? Maybe. Two weeks? Now I got it. over two years. Yeah. 
Uh, you got um, you got okay. more than that. Um, unless some of these problems overlapped, that could be it. They probably did. Okay, they overlap. All right. So anyway, um, this is back to the topic that we brought up last week about. Um, um, we're getting ready to purchase a new truck, and um, Truder's request that we do not trade in the old truck and we keep it as a backup so we can um, reduce the stress and the downtime of, of having things break as they always do in the middle of the winter. Is that, did I summarize your feelings Sometimes on that? Summer, cool. Sometimes in the summer too, but usually there's more people whining in the winter when they're not getting plowed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Did you guys have any more thoughts about that? I'm not in favor of keeping an extra truck. We no. have no real place to store it. Vehicles that are just sitting as extra vehicles tend to just break down sitting there. I know that from experience. Um, brakes rust up if they're not driven on a regular basis and they just seem to create problems just, just not being used. Um, without it having proper storage, I think that's just an invitation to devalue it and it'll end up being a problem within itself rather than an asset. I'm more so, for trading in. So were you thinking of rotating this through use or just parking it until you need it? Well, we were, we were thinking we would rotate it. And use it. And use it. Yeah. Where would you park it? I'm sure we'll park the grader outside. It's a lot more expensive. Doesn't sit well with me. Mm -hmm. the equipment yes. sits outside <laughs> all the time everywhere. Yeah. I know. I mean, you and could it also. It down outside all the time, too. Mm -hmm. Personally, I guess it would be nice. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But to get a new crop, we got to act. I'm all for the new truck. I just would like to trade well, we're it. Not, we're not going to get it, but also when we do that, if we trade, then we're down to the one truck for the rest of the year until the new truck is built. Boy, they aren't going to take it now? Yeah, they don't well, take it. Of course the you won't I, don't trade your, I wouldn't make though. a deal of not, I wouldn't trade the then truck take in until, until your, truck your new truck ready came in. in. Well, I'm pretty sure they're going to take that. Uh, I put it in stipulation. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what they used to do. Right now, I mean, we never bought a truck before and, not, because, and yeah. gave it up. Because of the availability yeah. thing. Not for a very long time. I would be a bit surprised. A couple, three weeks. Same spot with excavators right now. Yeah, single axle. Well, that went away. This is just a temporary tandem, was done. I, I didn't that get a chance to talk to, the, uh, to anybody from budget finance either about what they thought the best option was for us or to show them any of this information due to our uh, my own issues this last week. So um, I think. If we just go ahead with the order, can we somehow, would it make a difference if we put this truck, ordered this truck, and do we have to say what we're going, how we're going to deal with it financially right now? I believe I could tell him we want to try mm -hmm. and we're deciding what we're going to do as far as, as trading. I think he'll work with us on that. He'll put our name on it. Okay. So we can cement that in and get it in the works. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so why don't we do that and then we'll speak with the budget and finance. And I about can ask him because they, they're going to build this truck for the law. So I can ask him if we can keep our other truck until we... It's a yeah, municipal vehicle, out. so I would imagine that they understand that situation. Take ownership of the other one? Because yeah, you don't know the body company they could. But once you get the truck, you've got to outfit it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that that stuff is on order, too. 
for the dealership, but who knows? Yeah. All right, so I, you I, could I, end up with half of what you need to put the truck together right now. See what you can do to make it seamless. If it looks as though the pieces are not going to fall together <clears throat> by, you know, in the winter or during the winter, you might want to wait this this storm out until it can <coughs> settle down a little bit. And then you could just buy a truck and get it outfitted and not be told that the parts are not going to come in. I don't think we should wait until the no, winter. I don't, no, I, I don't either. I don't either, want to go through another winter. And I don't either, issues. but I, this, like this is a <coughs> difficult situation that anybody with equipment is in right now. Well, it's, you've got tentatively, he's penciled our name on this truck, correct? Well, yeah, but, but we, need, we to need it to me. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So well, I, let's, I, put it, let's see I the deal. I think we should yeah. move on buying the truck in. and then we figure yeah. out what the, and yeah. you can find out what the issues are as far as the, the mechanics are. It gives us an opportunity to talk with budget finance yeah. and see what the real ramifications are if we decide we want to keep one or, or if we decide to get rid of it. Because we can always get rid of it. <coughs> yeah, you could try selling it outright. <laughs> yeah. So we could True. keep the it if we wanted to, and then yeah. just get rid of it on our own, maybe down the road or whatever. If it doesn't work out, but I don't know. I I think it's something we need to discuss a little more. But if we should ink, ink the truck and get it started, yeah. so coming I'd, our way, I'd move to uh, I think. to you know tell them we want the truck. We want the truck. We want the truck. Yep, I'm good with that. But where are you buying the truck from? Do I need to put that down? Or? Is that? It's not. a Western Star, right? It's a Western, right. Western, Western Star right. from who? I don't know who owns them now. <laughs> so the brand of the truck is it's a Western a, it's Star? It's a Western Star truck, yeah. Okay. It used to be Freightliner in New Hampshire, but I don't know there. Oh, okay, it's that's been fine. bought out by yeah. somebody else. Yeah. So um, in our um, record, <coughs> do I have to have three quotes? to buy something or it's supposed to procurement policy calls for three right but the only well, problem is with is that now is is you tried to do that and you they won't yeah, give yeah. you a quote who, and that's where did, so we're stuck and who I got, was that i ended up getting i could only get two prices and the other truck <coughs> we can order in december and we'll get it next december is that correct? Maybe. 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 Mm. So we're kind of in a between the this rock one can and end up the same way. What's that? The way the parts are. Yeah, I know. So you did that. Get, that's the idea of why we may maybe. want to keep the truck. Do the deal. So excuse me, if you wanted this truck now, like you just voted to do, you should have it before this coming winter. Is that correct? <clears throat> Theoretically. Okay. Good. So you tried international. Or another company? I tried Mac. Mac and Western Star. So if you're gonna buy, if you're gonna buy another international, <laughs> I'm done. What about Peterbilt? <laughs> it's that simple. What about Peterbilt from Lucky's? Peterbilt does not make a hood open hatch. Okay. Kenworth, there's weird pump issues. For the hydraulic system, they don't run a front mount. Pump. I just don't want to get caught up in not having three quotes like we were supposed to. So I just need to document that you you attempted a third place and didn't get a quote. Right, actually, and I I attempted Charlie Boyce and they couldn't. Even, they wouldn't even talk to me give a better price. Okay. So go back in yeah November or something. Okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. And, um, oh. Okay. And, um, did we vote on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Harley. Come on, Cooter, on uh, the maintenance of the road out there. During the winter, the grading and everything. You know, stuff gets done before you got a bitch about it. I like that. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. We think they do a pretty good job, actually. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're fortunate that way. Yeah. Is there anything else? No. Nope. Yeah. Nope.
Thank you. Yeah. Next time. So do you want to um, <laughs> call them to? I'll call them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah call them tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Um, so we, we should probably get in touch with the, some people on the budget and finance yeah, and just and talk about what this is and yeah, how we yeah, can so deal with it. It's going to have some issues. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that he would come up and meet with whoever about financing option. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Terry, you got anything? Well, it's so fun to have everybody in the same room. I can just like, <laughs> instead of having to just the, X uh, off. The Sora had some issues with Fourth of July. Yeah, explosive and issues. I think we got it <laughs> fixed for now. Temporary Thanks. or what? Don't know. We didn't really find what I was hoping to find. Something. I didn't hear what kind of issues Terry had. I'm sorry. Um, these, um, pumps weren't running. The pumps weren't okay. running. And then they were short cycling. So we got it fixed. The guy came the next night. Waited so it wasn't holiday pay so we didn't have to pay through the nose to get him here. And then while he's here, I've always had issues with the dozing counters up there on the field. Mm -hmm. And he had a different float with him. So we dug it across and we put it on the other end. And the counters aren't, I mean, well, they're 17 years old. Uh, I've talked about it before. It was on the list that, you know, I gave you guys about they're going to need to get replaced. And he gave me a quote on replacing them and putting in the mission con control type stuff with a, a solar panel that mm -hmm. can, then I can just draw it, it come to my phone and we can just download it to send it to the state. Uh, eventually that's what you're going to do, but yeah. I got three counters right now that aren't working, so I'm not really interested in buying new counters and putting bad money after. So what and we was need this? new folks. So his price was around forty six hundred to do with the job. That's not so that doesn't count. I'd have to get a conduit between the two ends. Right now, see the folks are down here where the water comes in. So the rip, the rippling's causing them sometimes to start. Quick, 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 mm -hmm. quick, quick. Yeah. And we're trying one on the other end. We dug in by hand that day and just drilled a small hole through it. And it seems to be working good. It's only been a week. So. And is it the same kind of floating? Just no, a different it's location? A different. It's got an 11 inch swing to it. So it's got a rock bigger swing. Yeah. And. I think that's probably going to be the way to go because it's away from any rippling and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's with a big swing that takes a lot once it gets up there and it clicks on. So I'd like to have him do it and we'll just, I'll get somebody to come in a little small excavator and we'll dig in between them and put the conduit in. And when he comes, it won't take that long to do it. So what do you think? We might save some money. What, um, what are you thinking of, of the total there, Terry? I'm thinking it won't be much over five grand. Okay. So he's oh, sorry, you're installing a conduit right by the pumps that were working, or am I totally off base? Uh, you don't have to get into that much detail. I think you'd just say that we're working on, um, we gotta um, redo, redo the, the counters and the um and the septic tanks but i think it's going to save us in the long run because then we don't have to spend so much i mean i work on those things constantly yeah and i'm thinking this is going to take all that away well let's hope so, so. yeah so if it does no, I, then you're going to save a ton on towing yeah, yeah. no i'd I, no. go ahead and do it we, we should have some enough to cover that 
yeah. anyway, right? Yeah, and yeah. It, and because of, like I said, I, we aren't going to have to do the pumps this right. year. Right. Excuse me, one more time. I'm sorry. The counters for the septic tanks or at the septic tanks? I didn't hear you correctly. Up in the leach field. They're up in the leach field. The counters for the for the septic tanks. Yeah, no, the, it's the counters, dowsing tanks. The dowsing tanks in the leach field. Dowsing tanks in the leach field. Okay, there I'm sorry. Go. Excuse That's me. Right. I want to make sure I get it right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Well, now's the time of year to do it. Oh yeah, we got better in this winter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. All right, yeah, go for it. That, that's enough? Yes, yeah, water's doing well. And... Yep, okay. Um, but, next. Hey, just one more thing. Yep, yep. The fire department. <clears throat> oh, okay. We're looking in the a grant right now to get part of the funding, and we're coming up with a letter we're going to mail out to everybody to try raising that money. I've also found another spot and they're getting back to me with a price just to see where we're, make sure we aren't carried away with this air compressor. Oh, okay, air compressor. Because we do not, I mean, right now, we haven't been training, but the only way you train is then after you get done training, somebody's gotta go up to Hancock so and spend so. another three, four hours filling tanks and that's just, People aren't going to use them because nobody wants to go up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to realize that we are 100% volunteer when it comes to that. So, you know, a lot of guys aren't into spending, you know, if you're at a fire call for eight hours, who wants to go up for another four hours to fill tanks? Is that still around $30,000? 65 it's not still 30 anymore, is it? No. <laughs> it's a little more than no. that. We waited too long. <laughs> That's, so, I Terry, found this, another this one online. This fundraising is to pay I'm for training. From out of mass to so. No, it, um, they're um, looking at uh, um, funding to um, buy an um, air tank. Replace air, an air compressor. An air compressor. I'm sorry. I really couldn't hear very well. Uh, I apologize. No, that's, that's but that, that was the price I gave is a price for a fill station and a compressor. Right now we're so, someone could get really hurt by it. I mean, we got a freaking piece of plywood screwed to the wall and we set the tank in there and you got 3,000, you know, you got 5,000 pounds of pressure there. And, right. You know, it's, it's not a good deal. And this would be all, so nobody would send a sealed unit, and, which is yep. what should be. All right. That's it. Thank you. Jeff, welcome back. We missed you last weekend. Um, thank you. Yep. Um, we've got tomorrow energy efficiency investments coming uh, to do walkthroughs of the buildings in, in the town here. Uh, meeting here at 9 o'clock. Uh, from the email that I got today, Pat, you were interested in, in going uh, along in that? Uh, do you need me? I think it would be great to have the select board Member. I just love walking around town. Okay. It's driving around town. You're yeah. certainly welcome. I, I would, have, would have hoped so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I should have done a uh, better job in coordinating it with uh, John and, and well, with uh, Terry. You you I have no way to get into other buildings, okay. uh, in any of the buildings okay. in the town. Um, so, yeah, and I know that uh, Energy Efficiency Investments wants to talk to people that are using the facilities and are involved in their management as a part of this audit. Mm -hmm. um, whether that, I don't know that that has to be done tomorrow by any means. Um, they're, they're really going to be looking at the size of the buildings and what they see physically in it at this point. I've gotten them updated information on all of the uh, electric use uh, for the facilities and uh, fell asleep today on the computer trying to finish up the uh, see the oil, but I'll get that. I've got the older data for them. They actually want to see pre-COVID rather than during COVID. So I'll, I'll get that to them as well. Um, so the, the, the thing that I didn't do is get the coordination uh, to see. I don't know that we're going to be able to see all of the buildings in town in this kind of a walkthrough in one day anyway. Mm -hmm. But that's the scoop. Um, I think we did, you did, um um, send an email around after the last meeting um, um, expressing your um, disappointment that we 
didn't include the school building in the list of buildings, and I think that that that, that it should be included. It's a huge part. Of the yeah, it is a there. huge part. Yeah, I mean, technically, it's owned by the school board, but it's 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 in limbo now. And I think that while we have them here, that's a really important building to yeah. to work on. There was just some time sensitivity of making an announcement like that while we were yeah. waiting for the grant. Yeah. So we can. It's something that we can come out and say mm. now that yeah. we have secured the grant. Yeah. Did you see that? And the school has given me the their energy information, so I can get that through energy efficiency investments. Um, yeah, but I didn't do anything about it. That that would be a huge part of the puzzle yeah. there. We need yeah. to know the answers to. And I don't really see it much different than the walkthroughs that we've done with no. the commercial developers or other parties. Uh, you know, just trying to get a better handle on what that building uh, means and what its operating costs would be and what its problems are. Yeah. I'll be joining you tomorrow, Jeff. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we've got the um, uh, ready to approve the new fiscal year 21 22 tax rate. Um, we finally got the information that we needed to do that. The We need. Both the homestead and the, and then or just the one. Um, it was just the okay. non homestead was what we needed for. Oh, right, right. So the final. So we're looking at a uh, rate of zero point five seven nine six two seven one. Can you repeat that? I will repeat that for you. That's the municipal rate. That's the municipal. The municipal rate is zero point five seven nine six two seven one. And that's the municipal rate. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And the um, so what is the school rate? That would next be page. The next page over. We've got the homestead tax rate is one point five eight eight six, and the non homestead tax rate is one point five six five four. Those are not set by us. So what we're setting today is the municipal. Flexible. Oh, both? Yeah, the, both? It, yeah, so that's simple. the final number at the bottom. Um, uh, okay, when they're combined. Yep. All right. So we are waiting on the education set, uh, tax rate, which you just read, yep. in order to configure. Okay. So I move to set that, but I repeat it twice for Martha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'm confused. It says 0 0.57. That's, that's supposed to be double, the homestead and the non-homestead? No. Nope. 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 The, um, hey, I misunderstood you. I apologize. I can send them to her. But She's the gonna, one that you are approving, yes. the municipal rate is 0 0.5796271. You got Correct. it. Correct. You got it. And Julie, okay. Julie will send this to you, so you've got it in black and white. And you okay, own. thank you very much. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So, um... What did you get on that? Um, did we get a second on that? I, mo I moved it. I second. And you second. All in favor? All right. All right. Here we go. We got it. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. We got it. It's official, official now. That doesn't mean we charge twice. <laughs> God forbid. Um, we also have something here. Um, the Town B Pollinator Project. Um, we got a letter from Grace Futrell. I think this is how you... Um, say that in her organization be the change would like to support your community in creating a pollinator habitat as part of a collective town effort we ask that you designate an acre of municipal space school space or other area currently mowed or unused that you could envision as a dynamic pollinator meadow be the change would provide the seeds expertise and potential manpower to foster a successful transformation. They have currently habitat in 25 Vermont towns and only have 226 to go. Um, please just let us know of your interest and in how we may help. So, um, go Rochester. Go Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. be, it, be the change. Lucky once again. Where, where, would, where are you getting any proposals where you'd like to put this? 
I was going to ask you that. Where, um, what did we say? Uh, the up, up by the sewer site, up by Crowley's, or somewhere in Bingo, where we had property. By the cemetery, probably. We don't have an anchor at the sewer site. Yeah. No? No, no. not extra. No, no, it's all taken up. It's all taken up there. What, what is it that they're going to put? They're going to have got specific seeds, you know, of different plants that healthy for bees. What about down by the, the, by the agri-fertilizer thing the well house? By the well house? I don't think that we fertilize for bees, do we? They don't fertilize it, do they? They're just going to plant. Do they put, they can't do anything as far as other than grass down around the pump house. No wildflowers? They, they could plant wildflowers, but they can't put anything else with them. It's all, all like native plants. They could do them, I guess. Would save on mowing an acre? Might grow better. <laughs> More mowing. We could use a cemetery. <laughs> no, I don't think that would work. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, that little spot right there as you drive in, though, on the left, that's not used. What's I don't the, know if that's a whole acre. That's probably not an acre, though. That bank right there, as you just drive into mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. that's unused there, the road that goes up the lower Down road. by the well house. I guess we'd want to know exactly what they're... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to have a list of what they're going to plant and stuff, just so I can double check the state, because it could throw us right into something not good. I mean, our wellhead protection plan says that you will not do anything for that property other than have grass. So if we change it, then I got to contact the state and see if it's legit to do that. Who owns that? We got all the open property. Well, I, I can't help it. I mean, they really, they're quite animal about having anything around that well site. Anything. And they don't want activity. No bees. Some of them. Perry, who owns that property between Sky Hollow Road and Route 100? The state. The state does. Okay, I didn't know for sure. But you pretty much do it. I contacted them when we were looking at that area for the firehouse and did test holes up there and stuff and it wouldn't pass, that's why we didn't. But they were going to give it to us. Yeah. Not maybe, a big deal. Maybe we should think about that. That might yeah. not be a right, So it sounds like we have interest mm -hmm. in we have being interest. part of the uh, the project. We just have to identify a likely spot. The location yeah. with open meadow-ish right. area yeah. in our little valley. All right, so um, we'll um, do a little research and, and um, maybe have something more concrete by the next meeting. Yep. All right. Well, sounds good. That should be the plan. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of driveway permits. Thanks for sitting through the rest of the meeting. I'm sure you don't mind. That was kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah, fine. Let's see what's going on. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, since um, Patrick Gendron's got one at, um, it's, um, what's the address on Bethel Monroe? Is there an address on Bethel? It should be on there, 922, I believe it is. Um, this says, um, on Town Highway 1. Let's see. So, um, we talked about this. This is just uh, uphill from, um, yeah, Steve Sachs driveway, which is not a very nice driveway. In fact, I understand that Steve has talked to you about potentially abandoning his driveway to join in on yours. That is correct. If that worked out. And um, I think that in light of um, it would be an improvement on what's there and it wouldn't be adding a driveway, that with the condition that um, that um, you did allow him to, to use that new drive. That, uh, I, would, I would think that's uh, approvable. Would, uh, Cooter, do you have any input on that? I think it was a great idea. Yeah. 
eliminate Steve driveway and eliminate use Steve driveway. Use yours. I mean, that's kind of tentative. I don't have it in writing or anything. And right. I thought my one of my but in that I would like to see Steve's got a driveway culvert there. A couple, isn't it? And that would be great if that went away. Yeah. What was that, that again? The, Steve's got a driveway culvert there. Oh, for his culvert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. If that went away. Right. That Again, this is tentative. I mean, he was all for it, of course. He wants to get yeah. away from the corner, too. Yeah. And I don't have it in writing. And, I know, I don't have it. Um, I also, if he woke up tomorrow and said, sorry, I didn't know if that was would be yeah, based I, upon that I, or. Right, right. It's a question I had anyway. Uh, I have talked to him, and he's all for it, but again. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be so, solely um, based on that or not. It should be because we yeah. shouldn't have three driveways being bam, 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 yeah, right, ju right there, just for drainage purposes. Yeah. We'd be adding yeah. another right. culvert there, wouldn't we? I, I well, think we'd be adding one. one. There are two there now, though, like you said, but it does kind of bottleneck. Mm -hmm. It would be well, nice if the road get, there, too, as well. Yeah, there's a, it'd be it nice to get that one and cross one then. right below where it crosses the road. I mean, one right below his driveway, right. and then there's the two driveway culverts, and it's just the Well, it makes it worse for that pipe. Right. <clears throat> it crosses the road right below that, too, and it crosses the street. Yeah. It goes under the road right there, too. And then it Steve's is below it, so mm -hmm. it's only drain across the road. Just like the rest of it's way tight. Yes. Yeah. You know, years ago when the Sim Simpsons built that house, Steve sacked. Right. And I'm pretty sure there's only one could be one driveway cut for both properties. Right. Just like Bethel Mountain properties across from me, all those units had had two units for one driveway. Right. And that's the only reason Reese got to change his to the upper one because he bought that of the lot. Right. I right. I remember and that's that why his good. driveway came in down below with the other house there. Yeah, but you'll find that every if you it was set up so they could not only have one driveway for two lots. Yeah. If well, Steve's willing to, to go with but that. That's one. Well, I mean, Pat, it's a just, great deal. Cause it's, yeah, it'd be better for him anyway because that his driveway. Yeah, I understand. Now. I just, like I said, was going to see if it was stipulated on that because right now there are two pipes. <laughs> right. I never know, no. But, I mean, I don't know how that well, happened or how. You have to him a right away also to <coughs> come in on your property to use your property to access Yeah, that's it. another so reason that. There's a little legal yeah. thing going on. Yes, I know. You have to hire a lawyer. Um, I, I had a question that um, when I first saw this, that uh, I thought that perhaps this was already discussed back in the day. Are you just, are you bringing well, it Well, to up? be honest with you, I do have that copy. Uh, it was dated, The it came into the counter here on the 17th of, or 517 of 16 and the check was paid and it wasn't ever nothing was signed on the back so that's why I'm here again yeah I think that was probably Dan that yeah and so I didn't know if it had been I never heard that if one had been issued or if it was talked about before I, a board I, meeting. I or, remember that happening, but yeah, I wasn't on the set board then. So right, I and I look know. back, or we did, thankfully, mm -hmm. we had some help there, I appreciate that. Awesome. Uh, looked back in the minutes and we never saw, or I never looked at, but mm -hmm. there was nothing ever discussed, so I was like, well, it's so only $50, are, I understand, okay. but I didn't know if that was already talked about or if I need to be back, that's all. So this is on Bethel Mountain Road, right? Yes. Correct. Okay, yes. thank you. <laughs> well, so why don't we, do you want to um, have a more um, pointed discussion with the, with the neighbor, Steve, and see what, what he's... So the board's decision is to only approve if we tag the Sachs driveway in? I, I think that what everybody's saying is the precedent's been set for two lots and on a road like that to only have one access point so either you're going to use steve's or steve's got to use yours is what the board say and even I, if it's two different lots i mean that's they're yep. two. okay that's i, I think so across. that was all that was all one lot at one time i believe anyway yes, it was. and then it was split off right. So I, I think that probably in light of the situation there, we probably, and where it is. And, and where it is, it would be, it would it's, be a, it's a sketchy spot 
Yeah. Well, Steve's is definitely a sketchy spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that, uh, Pat, if he's willing to do that, that would be great. Okay. You know, and you come back, we'll just. I do actually it. have the, or you probably submitted those for me, but I have the address, the list of addresses that is required for the permit. But right. do you want me to give those to you or? Um, I don't, I don't know if we need them. That goes to zoning, doesn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. all for zoning and stuff. Oh, okay, that's for zoning, excuse me. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> but you can, but you can okay. talk to Steve and get something in writing from him that he's willing to give his up. To produce here at a meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe I can email or, it. Yeah, you don't yep. have to. What? Yeah, that's for a meeting or something. Don't like yeah. so, and actually, well, John is the one that really approves these things, right? I mean, he has to write um, off on them before we do. I think, um, we no, 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 find them. I just usually with my his input. opinion. We, we definitely <laughs> chime in. Yeah, yeah. Blessing. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate his blessing. Thank you. I appreciate the, the, the um, opportunity. What about the, uh, the, the, the 5% grade issue? Is that is that going to be doable there? I think so. And I'm actually going to use it. I was hoping to keep it as ag for now and then, you know, get some trucks in and out of there. And then... So, the way I understand the rule is 5% max for the first 20 feet. Gotcha. It doesn't matter what the use is. I uh, got you. And that should be attainable. I mean, I don't have to dig back in there a ways, but, yeah. you know, it works out like five to, eighths of an inch per five. I don't think I'd be that bad. Either. No. And I want it safe. I want to be able to come down and oh, stop. Yeah. I don't, yeah. you know, yeah. slide yeah. on the road. Or, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to look after that, make sure it's safe. And, Easy to plow, hopefully, too. Right. Well, it's, a lot of it is the water runoff, so. Yes. So by moving that pipe, so you're saying maybe take the pipe for Steve and just eliminate it? Yeah. Okay. Take it off the Ditches so. don't plug now as often as pipes, so. Gotcha. So I just want to make clear what I'm going to be talking to him about. So <coughs> you're moving that one, basically having no driveway there. Right. Coming around. I think it would be, personally, I think it would be safer for everybody. Yeah, I'll just have to figure out, like I say, liability or something there to, but that's what it is. Uh, I'll try to make happen, I guess. Because if I can get it, that's right in a, you know, an ease right away. Yeah, like yeah. just give him right an away. easement 30 you feet. You would still mm -hmm. own it. He would just sure. have the right away to get to us. I'm done all over. Sure. I mean, yeah. Lane, sure. It's not. That's not a big deal. Since you may, got engine, you know, from there right You now, may have to right. put it in for him, but you know. Yeah, I'll see to that. I don't know if to do that. <laughs> but if I could write something up, then maybe I can just submit it via email. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That'll okay. Work. Then he could pay you for plowing your own driveway. So yeah, I'll get some of that out. Of <laughs> so let me ask you, uh, would it? So with that in mind, and. I mean, that's going to take a few days. I'm not even sure. Sometimes I can't, I don't see him up there, but I'll try to get in contact with him. To use that for an access now, like I'm getting burn permits and such. Uh, there's a pipe across there. I've gotten burn permits before. I just want to make sure that I can utilize that. I mean, that Steve's not coming down my driveway yet, but I mean, I need to be able to have a little access and I can't really spend a bunch of dough making the bottom good when i got to get clear to the top yet. Does that make sense? I don't want to... I mean, I'll make it safer, obviously. i got to get yeah. trucks in and out, so we're not going to be coming down at a 45-degree angle. But I don't want to be able to finish that and have it tidy and done. I mean, Steve might be a few months away before I actually... He can start moving Yeah, down I mean, if we, if we have a, an agreement with what the end product is going to be, mm -hmm. I don't think there's a, a problem with yes. working towards it. Some exactly. Does yeah. the end product yeah. include subdivision and multiple houses up on the hillside? Potentially, yeah. Okay, so potentially, we, we, uh, we would want to be last prepared week. for that. Pardon? We would want to be prepared for that. Yes, and I was at the meeting last for the planning and zoning, and yeah. so I don't submit all the forms yet, but it's kind of where I'm moving towards. Uh, so, and that would be driveway. yeah, and that would be the driveway, a common driveway already for those multiple. Places right. up there, yeah. Right. Exactly. Where's your line towards the barn? Well, I would ideally like to keep it to the high side of the, well, the uphill side, though. and just have enough ditches for both sides. 
quite a ways up from there. Is that culvert is now? The property line? Yeah. No, it's right yeah. there. 70 feet. So I have well, enough basically for a road yeah. and two ditches on each side basically coming down. Period. Yeah, no, that's fine. So that's kind of the idea. Anyway. <coughs> no, it sounds, sounds like a good plan. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We just put it in as pending, basically. Yeah, so basically it's pending, and then we'll get us some you know, yeah, we'll make, information. Yeah, we'll make it work. I'll find an email, and yeah, yeah. as soon as I see Steve, I'll hold him down. <laughs> okay, and then we have another driveway permit from um, Dave Kennett for the piece of property his parents gave him up there just past the farm. Did you? He wasn't around today. He got us on Kelshaw. Yeah, yeah. Um, I talked to, um, to I Beth, or, or to... Um, I have his... I tried to talk to the Mexican, but they... <laughs> didn't make, you gotta, that didn't work. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> it's, um, halfway between the, the yeah, farmhouse I, and... His yeah. mother told me where it was, but... Yeah. For him to do that and make... A good line of sight out of there. He's got to move a lot of material. I kind of like to do a site visit with him yep. and see. I think he might have some other options. Maybe he doesn't, but okay. That road is fairly narrow right there too, and any swing he yes, comes out of that old driveway, I'm pretty familiar with walking up in there over the years. Is that and, John? Uh, I was heard her talking. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Yes. I thought. Thank you. And that's not a very good spot to come in and out there, he just doesn't have a good swing. Well, the, the existing log road or whatever is on an angle too, and it needs to be squared up to the roads. I just, it can be done, so there's yeah, I don't know where that material to move. Do you know where his upper lot line is there on that road? Not for sure. I don't know either. All right, so we'll, um, track him down when he's done with the cow show and, and have him show us exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, I think it would. Okay. Well, I think he might do, maybe there's some other options. And yeah. Maybe there is. Okay. So we'll table that for now. And... That was pretty much what we had on our list for tonight. Um, just um, get out of here. pay some bills and move on. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you, I thank you very much for letting me ask the questions and for sure. being able to do this on Zoom. It's, yeah. uh, it's a real pleasure. <laughs>